Hello, it's Marco Matosh, Chief Markham 3D, and in this section, we're going to be talking about dynamic paint. So let's start off, shift A, add in a mesh, add in a plane, and let's go rotate X 90 degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of plop it here. Let's scale it up a little bit. Let's go tab into edit mode, scale X two, and I'm going to put an edge loop with control R just in the center there. Let's turn off proportional editing because I don't need that anymore. Let's select everything and I'm going to subdivide by pressing W, subdivide W, subdivide W, and there we go. The more, the merrier. So the reason why I've subdivided all this is because then there's more data for the dynamic paint to capture. So from here, let's just have a look. Do the bullets actually go through? They sure do. And what I can actually do is I'm just going to scale that down because it doesn't need to be so big. There we go. Beautiful. Dynamic paint. Let's come over into the physics and click dynamic paint canvas. This will be our canvas Add a canvas. Now I want paint to come on here for now. So our surface type is paint. Let's enable sub stepping, uh, bump that up three. It just means that the bake will take a little bit longer, but the data it captures should be a lot cleaner. We'll turn on anti-aliasing as well, just to make sure those edges are a lot cleaner. From here, let's scroll down to our output and press plus sign on the paint map layer and wet map layer. Let's select our plane, dynamic paint, canvas type will change to a brush, add a brush. Now the paint is not the mesh volume, it'll be our particle system. And then we need to come in and select our particle system. And so if we come back, we can see nothing happens. So let's come back into our plane. I'm just going to quickly create a new window and come into the shader editor. Let's create a new material. And from here, shift a search, and we're going to go vertex color. And we're going to select our wet map from here. Let's add in a color ramp. Now we don't need to do this right now, but it's just to speed it up for later on and plug our color ramp into our base color. So now if we press play, still nothing. Let's go into our material. There we go. Now we see our wonderful bullets. So we've only got six, seven bullets. Does that mean the other ones do not actually go through? So it actually appears that some of them aren't being captured. Um, and that was all part of that speed that I was talking about. If we bump up the sub steps, let's try now. No, we got the same results. So let's come into the color ramp and we will change this around. So our black are our bullets. And at the moment you can see that they fade. I don't want them to fade at the moment. Well, the way we're going to approach this is we're probably going to have two canvases on top of each other and one's going to be the smoke simulation and one's going to be kind of like the texture painting. So for now, let's just work on the texture painting. When we add our textures, I don't want it to be drying off. So as you can see here, it kind of fades away. I want that color to be solid. So I'm going to turn off drying, which means over 500 frames, the color dissipates 100%. And now that I've got it disabled, it'll stay there for the duration of the animation. Please make sure you like and subscribe to keep up to date with the next lot of videos that are coming out.